Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Stories from the Jail House, talk about everything jail related here. Big thank you to everyone that watches my channel, especially you guys that have been here from the beginning. We're nearly at a thousand subscribers guys, can't believe it. Um, if you've not been here before, I'm someone that's spent, uh, you know, 11 years of my life in that, some of the toughest prisons in England. I started that journey at only 15 years old and at 27 I remember coming out and thinking, do you know what, I want more from life than this. I didn't know where I was going to start, what I was going to do, but I just knew that I was done with prison. And, you know, lucky enough, I got into Strongman and, you know, I absolutely loved it. It wasn't just plain sailing, I talk about how difficult it is in my other videos. But today I want to talk about that series on BBC Three. It's called Time, right? And the attacks that happened. And you see in the programme a lad gets hot water and, and sugar that thrown in his face. Now, just for you guys, the devastation that hot water causes to naked flesh is absolutely horrific. Um, the smell of it, it lasts for days and the, the, the injuries is just absolutely irreparable. You know, I remember, I remember um, some Welsh guy, he was watching the rugby, um, two Iraq people came in from behind and taught, poured boiling hot fat over his head and it got in his hair. But do you know what, that guy just got up and started fighting these guys. He was an absolute fucking warrior. He was a bloody psychopath, but I tell you what, you know, how he got up from that and started fighting was beyond me. I was just sat there and I was really young and I was just like, oh my God, this place. Um, and yeah, so another way they used to attack you is by the old razors on a toothbrush, you know. A lot of the time that gets fucked up though. A lot of the time I've seen people try and slash someone and the razor breaks, the toothbrush breaks in half, they miss, you know. Um, but yeah, that's another way that it can happen in prison and it's quite a devastating one if it's got, if it's, if it's got you properly, you know. Um, plastic spikes and metal spikes, you know, I've seen some, I've seen some people nearly build some fucking swords in there out of some stuff, you know. They're so creative. If they got into anything else outside that was normal, they would have fucking flourished. But, you know, they got into fucking crime. Um, but, yeah, and a lot of it, you see in that programme that the lad got hot water thrown over his face because they thought he was a grass. Now, this happens a lot. In prison, it is full of, you know, paranoia. I've never seen men talk like women before, but in prison they do, they're bitchy. And you get people that just want to hurt other people. So that there's a guy that will always talk out of someone else into it because he wants to be paid. And the guys that generally go around and will do these attacks are people that have been IPP'd or given life sentences and they just won't conform. They won't. And they've was spent half their life down the segregation unit. And they'll come up from the segregation unit and they won't be up on the wing for long. They can't cope. They end up attacking someone else or attacking a screw or, you know, they'll, they're so volatile, they're so angry and, you know, and they just won't, they won't, they won't conform to prison life. And then they're the people you have to watch out for, not people that look like me. You know, the people like them, you know. You see a lot of the Scottish guys walking around with cuts on their face, you know. Knife crime in Glasgow is terrible. And, you know, from the early days, they are um, cutting each other with knives. And so with they, in jail, you've got to watch out for them. <coughs> you can't watch out for everybody, to be fair, because even your so-called friends in there can turn on you. You know, I've seen before that, um, look, say five people come in for a murder, and four will go on one wing and one will go on another. And now the screws have done this for no other reason, but there was just no room. Now, the minute he lands on a different wing, people will start going, do you reckon he's a grass, do you reckon he's informant? And you know, probably not, no. But like I said, people, there's always that person in jail that would likes to hurt other people. And, you know, and the thing is, like I say to you all the time about going to prison, the first thing you do in prison is just shut your mouth and watch. Because the people that you have to watch out for, like I say all the time, they do not look like me. They're not big, they're not scary. They're just normal little people and they will fucking destroy you. And they will, 
they will absolutely change how you, how you look. And because in prison, you've only got about 30 seconds before the screws are on you. So if you really want to hurt somebody, that's the road they go down. There's no more fights in prison, not a straight. It's not like there used to be. I remember when this black guy from Posta, I can't remember his name. If you guys know what his name is, he got five years for rape. Um, he was a nasty fucker, a big black guy. And he had a fight with this other uh, traveling boy on, on the prison yard. Now, that was a proper fight, mate. They had a fight. They were fighting for about five minutes. They were both big lads. And, you know, that's probably the best fight it was straight now I've ever seen. Other than that, most of the time it's been nasty attacks. And they are nasty as well, you know, because they're life changing. You know, the ears being bitten off and stuff like that. It's, just, it's a really, really cruel, nasty place. Um, I can't get too graphic because last time my video I took down, so what I will say is, guys, you know, prison ain't a nice place, it's a rough place, you know, that um, time is probably the closest thing I've seen to getting it right, you know, especially how that screwed got, um, you see how we got blackmailed, you know, I'm not proud of this. But I remember one time a screw came to me, he asked me if he could get some steroids off me. So I sent him to a, 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 a gym that I knew he could get steroids. And I remember when he came back in, he was like, oh, thank you, mate. And I was like, listen, you need to bring us in some Debo. And like I said, I'm not proud of some of the stuff I've done, but you know, it was very realistic how screws get in the mix. Anyway, guys, I'm live from Turkey. 